Let's consider the following game. A coin is flipped and remains hidden to you. Your job is to predict what side is facing up on the coin. If you are correct, you will earn one dollar. If you are incorrect, you will earn nothing. This repeats for a total of M rounds, meaning that you can win a maximum of M dollars if you are perfect with your predictions. Or you could earn zero dollars if you are never correct. Luckily, you are not alone. Available to you is a cohort of coin predicting experts. Some experts have high accuracy predictions, whereas other experts aren't so good. Before the coin is revealed, and before you make your prediction, you are able to see what all of the other experts predicted. You can use any of the information available to you to make your prediction, or you can ignore it altogether. What should you do to earn the most money? Well, how good does random guessing do? Suppose the coin was fair, then the following scenarios occur with equal one-fourth probability. With probability one-half, we earn one dollar, and with probability one-half, we get nothing. So our expected earnings in one round is one-half of a dollar. For M rounds, our expected earnings is M over two dollars. But we have experts! Why don't we use them? Let's suppose we were given the following information. One of the people in the group of experts is designated as the coin flipper. At the start of every round, they go over to flip the coin, cover it up, and then rejoin the group. Each expert then truthfully reports what they predict the coin is showing. Obviously, the designated expert will always be correct with their prediction, as they know what they flipped. So we can try to come up with an algorithm that finds the designated expert. How can we do this efficiently? The one thing that distinguishes the designated expert from the rest is that she is never incorrect. All other experts have the ability to be incorrect. So the idea is simple. The moment we see an expert make an incorrect prediction, we remove them altogether from further consideration. As we continue to remove experts round after round, we will eventually reach a single remaining expert, who must be the designated expert. Notice that we have no guarantee on the number of rounds it takes to find the designated expert. In the best case, all of the n-1 other experts predict incorrectly immediately, making it take just one round to find the designated expert. But maybe the experts are really good and extremely rarely make a mistake, in which case it could take many rounds to narrow down who is the designated expert. This is great, but how do we predict? Random guessing won't work, because as we have seen, it only gives us 50% accuracy. And if it takes a long time to find the designated expert, then we may make a ton of mistakes. Maybe we should use the predictions of the experts to inform our prediction. Solving this issue is simple. We will always predict what the majority of the remaining experts predict. If we make the correct prediction, then great, we get the dollar and a few of our experts disagree. But if we don't predict correctly, then so must have at least half of the experts. So we will sit content with the fact that we can eliminate at least half of the pool, making significant progress towards finding the designated expert. But how good are the predictions we make? We want to determine the maximum number of mistakes that we can make by following this policy. In other words, how many times can we remove at least half of the experts until we are left with only one expert, the always correct expert? We can compute this upper bound by removing exactly half of the experts at each step. This case is logarithmic, so we make at most log n mistakes where n is the number of experts we have initially. 
let's take a step back now. Our algorithm did not depend on the setting of predicting coin flips. This means that in any binary decision setting where there are two options, we can follow the algorithm. For example, we could use this strategy to predict if a stock will go up or down, or perhaps to predict the winner of a sequence of basketball games, or maybe even to predict whether or not it will rain every day. However, critical to this algorithm is the existence and presence of an all-knowing expert. Of course, this is rarely a guarantee. Instead, we should aim to construct a robust prediction system without the guarantee of a perfect predictor. But do we even have to change our algorithm? Well, yes. If all experts make the same incorrect prediction in the first round, our algorithm would remove all of them from consideration, and we would be back to random guessing. So, instead of eliminating the experts altogether, it makes more sense to maintain a quantity that indicates how much we trust an expert. Experts who make fewer mistakes will have higher trust quantities than those who make many mistakes. Let's formalize it. At the start of the game, each expert is given a trust parameter of 5, initialized at the value of 1. Between rounds, if the expert predicts correctly, their trust value stays the same. If they are wrong, phi gets halved. Of course, we also need to define how we make predictions. Before, we went with the majority vote. Now, we will go with the weighted majority. To do this, first take the sum of the trust values for all of the experts who predicted heads, then take the sum of the trust values for all of the experts who predicted tails. We will then predict the outcome that has the higher sum. Once the hidden coin is revealed, we proceed to half the trust values for the experts who were incorrect, and then proceed as normal by going with the majority weighted vote for the next round. It remains to determine how many mistakes our algorithm makes. Let phi to the t denote the total trust at time t. A mistake is made when at least one half of phi to the t corresponds to the wrong prediction. We apply the penalty of halving the corresponding trust, which means we maintain a quantity of trust that is at least one fourth of phi to the t but we also lose a quantity of trust that is at least one-fourth of phi to the t. The remaining untouched trust corresponds to experts who predicted correctly, so their value is not changed. When we consider the total trust in the next time step, by summing up what we have, it must be at least three-fourths of phi to the t. But this doesn't yet tell us anything about the number of mistakes that we make. For now, let us say that our algorithm makes m mistakes, and we will try to determine what m is. We now know that each time we make a mistake, a 3 fourths multiplicative factor is applied to the total trust that remains. Additionally, remember that we have n total experts. Then, since the trust value starts at 1 for each expert, at time t equals 1, the total amount of trust is n. We should also note that the total amount of trust never increases. Let's say that the first mistake occurs at time i. Using our first known, we get this. But since trust always decreases, we can also say that it is less than or equal to 3 fourths of n. Similarly, after the second mistake, the amount of remaining trust would be less than or equal to 3 fourths squared times n. Following this pattern inductively, after we make the mth and final mistake, our total trust is less than or equal to n times 3 fourths to the power of m. How else can we bound phi to the t? Let's compare the total trust to the trust we have for the best expert. 
Suppose the best expert makes a number of mistakes which we denote as best. Notice that the best expert starts with trust of phi equals 1, and each time it makes a mistake, phi halves. So 1 goes to half, goes to 1 fourth, etc. Since we have defined the best expert to make best mistakes, its final trust must be 1 half to the power of best. And since the total trust, phi of t, includes the best expert, we have phi of t is greater than or equal to 1 half to the best. With our givens, we can combine the two bounds that we have on phi to the t, and with a little bit of math magic, we get the following result. That the number of mistakes our algorithm makes is at most 2.4 times the best expert, plus some small additive constant. This is pretty exciting. This algorithm says that by following the protocol, we will perform similarly to the best expert out of the bunch, without even knowing which expert that is. Naturally, there are a couple of questions. First, the 2.4 factor is admittedly not dazzling. Is there a way to reduce this? And secondly, we've only explored the situation where there were two possible outcomes, such as heads and tails. How do we handle the case where there are multiple outcomes? Both of these questions can be answered by using a more complex algorithm. It requires some noticeable modifications on the algorithm, such as the following. Each expert will be a representative for one of the many outcomes. The trust value for an expert now corresponds to the probability that we choose that action to predict. Lastly, the penalty factor is 1 minus epsilon L, where epsilon is a set parameter and L is the loss. There are many more details about this algorithm that I am omitting, but it achieves performance as good as the best expert. That is, put simply, that 2.4 factor from before becomes a 1 with this algorithm and expectation. So there you go. You can now predict the future. What is amazing about the technique shown today is that you can perform almost as good as the best expert without you having much domain expertise. That is, I might not know a lot about basketball, but with this technique, I can predict winners almost as well as the best predictor. So yeah, maybe I lied, and this isn't really predicting the future. You need the help from experts. But just with everything in life, it takes the help of those around you to do the impossible.